All right, now let's start drawing a little bit of the f ground around the house. We can finally get rid of our V-ray plane here. It's just been kind of a placeholder. If I'm, I'm going to hit Shift C and Shift L, that's going to turn off all my cameras and my lights. You can also hit Shift O to turn off all your objects, and Shift S to turn off all your shapes. But we actually want those on. So that's just to clean the scene up so you can see a little better what you're trying to do. So if you're not needing those right now, then go ahead and turn them off. But just remember so that you're not wondering where they went later. Okay, I'm actually going to go into my layers now, turn off any of my reference layers. And let's create a new layer called Site. Make sure it's on. Make sure it's the current layer. And here we go. For the site, I'm going to do some simple stuff. Keep it really simple. Sites are, in general, modeled the same way that we modeled the house. You can use splines. So, for example, you could do something like this. And you could say this is all just a big concrete pad and walkway right here. So that was the front of the house. Okay, so you could do that. Lower it down. Put a normal on it, like that. And then you'd go in and draw the sidewalk separately. Put a normal on that. So this is one way you can do it. If you in this mostly works if you have a completely flat site. Now if you have a sloped site of any kind, which you know, that happens pretty often. Not very often that our f site is going to be perfectly flat. Sometimes we try to fake it that way because it's so much easier to model that way. But I'm going to show you how to model sloped sites because that's more useful to you, even as a beginner. So what I'm going to do is just start with maybe a polygon right here. Just draw a rectangle, convert to it a poly. And then if you grab it an edge like that, hold down shift and drag, then it's just going to keep creating new faces for you. And we can do this to create the entire site if we want. Of course, there's many ways to do this. You can also use the terrain tool built into Max. If I select all those edges, like oh, that's a vertices. Sorry. I select all the edges here, like that, and go to the right view. Let's say it's built up a little bit in the back, and then it comes down, slopes down like that, and then that patio is going to be floating just a bit, and then it comes down a hill like this. Okay, so now we have this kind of nicely sloping site. We'll say on this side, on this side, we're going to go up higher, like this. Just grab that. I guess we don't want to go up too high. We'll go up higher in the back and then in the front we need to come down in front of that patio area. Like that. So there's a basic site. Kind of going up a hill there. Now the idea here for me is going to be to kind of extend this far enough so that I can put some trees in and kind of create a mid-ground so that there's not an obvious line where my 3D model stops. 
because I'm going to composite it with a background image and I just need it to kind of mesh into that background image so on this side we don't want to see this edge so let's just extend it all out select all those open edges there hold down shift and drag and that will take it to the edge of our scene yeah that's alright let's take maybe that last little vertice over there and bring it down now if we want to smooth this out a little more you can do a modifier on it. I go to the modifier stack, go to Turbo Smooth. You'll see what that's doing. We call that tessellating, where it's dividing, dividing one polygon into four polygons, and kind of smoothing in between. So let's look at this for an example for see what that turbo smooth is doing. Turn it off and it's a sharp corner right there. What turbo smooth will do is divide it here and then kind of smooth and then divide it here and smooth that sharp edge out so it'll make nice art just like that. See that? So you can turbo smooth, you can turn up the iterations, make it even more smooth like that. That'd give you a nice smooth sight. That's good. Now you might be wondering how do we cut out things like sidewalks from this? Well, again we go back to the splines. Let's just take a rectangle. Actually, I don't think rectangle is the tool we want for this. So let's just let's create a, a walkway that comes down kind of jogs right there and then keeps going like that. And let's just go into the spline and outline it. This will be kind of our sidewalk walking up to that patio there. And you'll notice that it's just hovering above, which is fine. Oops, still in sub-object mode here. Okay, let's move it up. So it's just hovering above that site, and that's okay. I'm going to show you something we can do with that. If we take this and let's con let's just collapse it down by converting it to a poly again, that burns in that turbo smooth. And if we take that and go to actually let's convert it to edit mesh, it'll look exactly the same. Go to Create Objects, Compound Objects, Shape Merge. We had the terrain selected when we went to Shape Merge, so it's already using that shape. You can see Mesh Rectangle 026, that's our terrain. And then we pick a shape to merge with it and that's where we're going to pick our little sidewalk shape and you can see what that just did it cut that right out of our terrain mesh below now if you just convert to edit mesh again collapse the shape merge object select here on faces and if you have it set up right it will actually just automatically select those faces that you cut out which is great and you can detach them if you want by right clicking hitting detach to their own object but you don't even have to do that you can just turn them into a separate material so what I'm going to do here is make that like a concrete material for a sidewalk going up to our house and you don't need that reference shape anymore and then the rest around it is going to be kind of natural grasses and I see a spot where the terrain's coming up through the house. We don't want that. So what we can do here is this is a good chance to show you soft selection. If we select that vertices, vertice, go to soft selection, use soft selection. Now, if you if I do this, you'll see rainbow colors going out from that 
that point I have selected. That means that when I move that point, it's going to affect all those colored vertices around it. It's going to affect all those colored vertices around it, but at different levels. So you'll see, uh, I can push push it down, and it pushes the one I have selected down the most, and the rest are kind of softly going down. And you can also, and it's going down at this profile here, so you can adjust that using the pinch and the bubble. So that's okay right there. You can see that inside the house, the terrain is kind of going through the house, which isn't good. We can So we can go in and manually delete those faces, or we could do another shape merge to cut out the foundation of the house so that they don't go through. But I'm just going to do this real quick. Kind of a basic. We don't want soft selection for that. So that was kind of a sloppy way to do it, but you get the idea here. So now we have kind of some terrain. We have uh, our house sitting in the terrain. We have a sidewalk coming down right there. Now really all we need to do is start putting in some landscaping, finish up all the materials I haven't done yet, and then we'll be ready to render. And then we can get to compositing this using Photoshop, putting in a bunch of source imagery, backgrounds, all that kind of stuff to really spruce this image up. And then we're pretty much done. So we're getting close. Stay tuned for the next video.